and welcome back to another episode of Life in Prison. My name's Zach, and for anyone that's new, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification button also so you're first informed when I upload. I upload at least once a week now. So, this channel, prison content. For the ones returning, I greatly appreciate your support and you know I already fucking love you guys. So today what we're going to be talking about is um, the different races of gangs that are in West Virginia prison system. So, as I said and as I always keep saying, each prison system in each state is completely different. Ones out west are a lot more political race-wise. The ones here on the east coast are more political on the gang side, um, organization side. And me being black but being a part of DMI, which is a dead man incorporated, which is a predominantly white prison organization. Um, you know, at first, me going into prison, there was never an issue offhand, regardless if I was, you know, affiliated or not, people fuck with me. And it's, as I keep saying, as, as long as you're yourself, you know what I'm saying, people people will fuck with you, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to try to be this badass, you know, you gotta be Pablo Escobar for people to fuck with you. As long as you're yourself and don't start no bullshit and don't start no fictional shit, you, you don't want to go into jail or prison being this fictional character because it's not going to work out for you, right? So, I never had any issues and me being, you know, in Martinsburg, West Virginia, Majority of people, you know, there was a lot of black people, you know, there was a good bit of white people up here too, so it's not until you get to prison is when shit starts splitting off here like this, because in jail, you can speak to anybody, black, white, it doesn't matter, you know, some jails look more political and some really do start splitting off, but like I said, those, that's not around here, all right? Um, once you start getting into higher classification prisons, right, once you start getting into prisons where they're serious dudes at, that's when it gets a little bit more political, especially if you have not only different gangs, but if you have different races that are kind of up there, you know? And even if you have numbers, right, it doesn't mean that you run and shit, you know? Just because, for instance, DMI, you know what I'm saying? We got a, a, a name because motherfuckers was getting wrecked, right? Even though we had a good amount of numbers and, you know, people people feared us, we, we weren't running nothing, you know what I'm saying? Bloods definitely had more numbers than we were. They weren't running nothing. Crips also hella numbers. They weren't running anything, honestly. And when I say running stuff, I don't mean like you bullying people and you take shit over, right? I mean like in prison wise, if you run in something, it's more or less you you hold the power. And it doesn't mean numbers either. It's what do you have that people need, right? So once you get in prison, if you have drugs which is the number one thing that's a commodity, right? Because anyone can make a knife out of anything. It's the drugs that people can't get. So if you have a open connection, unstoppable, unlimited amount of anything, then you're running the show. And as I said in my past videos, up in Mount Olive, you know, these Aryan skinhead dudes, you know, just because they only had 17, 18 people max, once you have these COs unlock, you know, and I did another video on the corruption that was uh, kind of thrown out in the open back in 2019 when these COs were outed by fucking with these Nazi dudes by posting a class photo all doing the Ha Hitler salute. The fuck? So. When you have that type of relation with the COs on inmates, you can do anything. And that's why I said back then, I don't know now, because I'm not up there. They were running the yard. You know what I'm saying? The dudes were feared because all those dudes pretty much have already killed somebody um, either in prison or that's exactly why they're in there anyways for you know, killing somebody. You know, they had respect. That's pretty much what it was. It was, you know, people respecting them. At Huttonsville, I would say at a certain point in time, um, these individuals that ran with the the Odinist guys, right? So there's an individual, I'm not gonna say his name, he he was trying to make some stuff up. I'm gonna say it was called T88, right? So it was like a sector off of the Odinism, but it was more of a racial thing, right? He had an issue because with a majority of 
people in prison being black, okay? I want to say statistic-wise that there is 13,000 individuals currently locked up in West Virginia. 13, you know what I'm saying? Roughly 13,000 people um, that are behind bars. Each year, at least 34 different people, 34,000 different people are booked in jails in West Virginia. Um, he didn't like the fact because at the time I was the only black DMI member on the yard. You know what I'm saying? And all the dudes I ran with were all white and respected, you know, some of them. And on the gang unit up at Huttonsville, B2, when you first walk in the pod, it's three set of TVs and it's the black TVs, okay? In the back of the pod was two more sets of TVs and they were the white TVs, right? So it's kind of like prison etiquette. If you're white, you're not just gonna go up to the black TV and start changing the channel. You know what I'm saying? But up there, it was it's a little bit more lax. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I I have gone over to the white TV, sat there, changed the channel, but not on people. Like you know what I'm saying? If someone's watching TV, you obviously don't go up and just change the channel, right? Um, which it's really not an issue. But when people want it to be an issue, that's when it kind of came up. Eventually, that dude ended up fucking. That shit that he was trying to start, the TADA shit, it didn't work. At the end of the day, let me just say, it didn't work, right? Because this individual, you know, you got a lot of these dudes that'll go from prison to prison, and they'll, if they move from one prison to go to another, he's one of those guys that kind of picked up someone else's persona and then tried to bring it to a different facility. Didn't work, right? So there was never, it never came to any fights, but there were some things said um, at the time to the tops, like, you know, white boys black he should be at the other side with the blacks and at the time this is what the top said white boys gonna sit the fuck back here where his comrades are or if he wants to sit up there he can sit up there he'll sit wherever he wants to sit all right there should be no issues he's not going to change the channel on you guys obviously out of pure respect but then they white boy gonna do what the fuck white boy want to do right things like that may seem small but Anyone that's ever done prison time or anyone that's ever really seen or heard prison stories knows that small things can escalate into very, very large things at a drop of the dime. And when, when race starts getting involved, that's when it, things kind of get fuzzy and hezzy, right? So not sure about any other prisons, but speaking on uh, maximum security wise in West Virginia, so up at Huttonsville gang wise, different races. So you had... Um, the GDs, Gangster Disciples, right? They were majority black, but there was a few white members, okay? Um, then you had Vice Lords. Um, majority of them were black, but there was a few white members, right? So once you start intertwining um, races within gangs, right? Because most of the time if something pops off, it's going to be whites versus blacks, right? You know what I'm saying? But now once you have these gangs and organizations that have a mix of races, that's when things can get a little fuzzy because you're supposed to ride with your own kind. Whenever you're in prison, there's certain cars that you ride in. If you're a key holder, right? If you ran a top spot, me personally, everything's documented. I've, anything I ever talk about has already been documented. It's, it's done and over with, right? I've held top positions before while I was in prison. Um, being a key holder, you, there's different cars. You keep the people that are in your car in line, right? There should never be a car crash. There should never be, it, I mean, it happens, you know, once once different sides start beefing with each other, and there's a few times, like I said, when DMI clashed with, you know, some of the Crips from Charleston, some of the Bloods from Charleston, you know, we've clashed with some of the Odinist guys multiple times, multiple times. Um, when Tommy Cartwright ended up getting stabbed up, you know, 17, 18 times over initially a cup of coffee that kind of escalated. Uh, previous video, we spoke with Chewy, who's currently locked up at Huttonsville doing a life center, doing a life sentence. You know, things can happen and things can escalate very, very quickly. Like I said, once you have races that are starting to clash, you know, administration, it kind of fucks with them just because during the whole time of my incarceration, five years, there was only I was only on the yard with 
two other black DMI members, um, Mike Corny and, and Monte Carlo. They were kind of there and then dipped off because they were coming from other prisons. Mike came from Mount Olive down to Huttonsville. Um, Monty came from like Steven Center up to Huttonsville, but I'd been at Huttonsville, you know, for the past four years at the time. So I'd held that spot and there's been a lot of times where a lot of things pop off. And like I said before, with my nickname being White Boy, right? You may look at me and be like, this nigga's black. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But nicknames in prison kind of, they can kind of help you out. You know what I'm saying? It always worked out just because White Boy never matched with the skin tone of me, obviously. So for a while, it, it helped out with, you know, administration-wise. Then obviously, after I started getting bopped off, it, it blew up in my face. Whenever you got Hispanics, Blacks, and Whites all in the same place, there's going to be tensions, regardless of what race there is. There's going to be tensions. Females, males, if you keep people in a single location for long periods of time, just like for family members and just like with loved ones, people fight, right? So in West Virginia currently, statewide, state prisons is about 7,100 inmates, right? Local jails, about 3,300. Youthful offenders, almost about seven, 800, right? And for federal prisons, you know, it's pushing 1,800 and this is a percentage with so many, with so many people being in certain states and these states, you know, West Virginia, the prison systems really aren't that large. Like, you know, certain states, Texas, California, Florida, um, Maryland, for instance, Virginia, pr these prison systems are massive. So the 10 states with the highest prison populations in the country, right? First is Texas with 154,000, almost 155,000 inmates, right? California with almost 123,000. Florida sitting at 96,000. Georgia sitting about 54,000. Ohio, 50,000. Pennsylvania, 45,000. New York, 43,000. Arizona, 40,000. And Illinois, 38. With Michigan at the bottom at a low 38.5. So... You know, West Virginia, when I say there's a little over 13,000 in, in, inmates, you know, Huttonsville, I want to say there was 1,200 inmates up there while I was up there. You know, 12, 1,300 inmates. And sometimes you're not going to see a majority of these inmates at all. You're not going to see all of them. Because, like I said, North and South Side split up. They don't really try to let North and South Side, you know, congregate too much with each other. Just because, especially if you're on like certain units, the gang unit, for instance, or if you're a sex offender, and and how you can tell if someone's a sex offender because they have these classes. Um, I just recently did a video on sex offenders in West Virginia prison systems. What ends up happening to them? You know, a lot of them end up getting beat up, extorted, and killed in the long run. But there's a sex offender class. Um, I want to say it's I want to say it's so. P, it's, it's, it's a SOP program, I, I want to say it's sex offender program, um, but they all have to, if you have a sex charge, you have to attend this class. And that's exactly how, I didn't mention in the last video, that's exactly how you would fish out who's actually, who has a sex charge. Because what I've seen a lot of people will do, right, is if they've been to prison before, they'll have someone type up some old documents or whatever and put a different date on it and send it in as their legal documents so that they'll have documents saying that they're in here for some burglary shit, right? Instead of some fucking sex shit. But you can't get around that because if you're currently in prison on a sex charge, you have to attend a sex offender program. Obviously, I don't know what they talk about in there, you know what I'm saying? I've never asked the sex offender what they spoke about in their little fucking meetings and shit, but I just know that, you know, if you're currently in there on a sex charge, not only that, but you, you can't have pictures of ch children in your cell. Like, if you have someone, a uh, picture of someone under the age of 18 in your cell, and if you're in there on a sex charge, 
you will get rid up and you will get in trouble. Most likely going to the hole for that shit. So October 13th, 2021 was the last time this survey was done. Um, black, and, uh, black Americans are incarcerated in state prisons at nearly five times the rate of white Americans. Nationally, one in 81 black adults in the U.S. is serving time in state prisons. That's a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? That's Those are West Virginia numbers also. You know what I'm saying? Um, but nationally, one in every 81 American? One in 81 out of 81 black Americans doing time. You know, and you would think in most of these prisons that most of the blacks would run a lot of these prisons because there's, you know, a vast majority of black inmates. But once again, you gotta, what, you gotta figure once you go into prison, it's not just all these black guys. Now it's all these black guys. These might be Crips. These might be Bloods. These might be Muslims. These might be, you know, GDs, BDs. They might be fucking, you know what I'm saying? BGF, who who knows? DMI, they might be, you know what I'm saying? You, now there's clicks. Now, if they all were to join up as one, you know, their numbers would be hella strong. But you gotta think in prison, it's it's more politics. It's more about who's got the bigger set of balls, more or less. It's kind of the inmates versus the COs and the administration opposed to the inmates against inmates. You know what I mean? I never really understood that. At the end of the day, you're all there serving the same thing, time. You're serving time together, okay? Regardless if your time is longer than my time, we're still serving time together. So it's us in the same boat, sleeping with the same blankets, putting on the same shoes. These COs, they're different than us. Why couldn't it be us versus them? Like I said, whenever that riot popped off back in 2014, you know, at the end of the day, everyone up there on B2, the blacks, the whites, you know, the skinheads, the non-skinheads, we all kind of united together for a, a certain reason. Didn't really get far, but it can happen, you know. With me being raised in, a, in, in an older um, religious household, an older white religious household growing up, right, you know. It's crazy because I was adopted back in, you know, the early 90s to an older white couple. At the end of the day, it was the people that went to their church that had issues and things to say about the whole situation. So, growing up, I never really, there was no, there was no racism. If you like this shirt, my man Caleb over Stone Collective Supply Company has did a new drop. Go ahead and check him out on his Instagram. Shit's fire. As always, his product is fire. You know, if you're into the cannabis, go check him out. As always, guys. Keep y'all heads up. I said my utmost love, loyalty, respect. I love you guys. Stay positive.